Uh, good morning, everyone in the Philippines. I'm Christopher Contreras. Um, I was born in San Antonio, Texas, in the USA, but I live here now, so you know I'm glad to be here. Uh, today, I want to share with you my experience with with my grouper culture. Um, we have a few species of, of grouper here. We have the, the Epinephalus fusco gatatus, which is the tiger grouper, and we also have the Epinephalus coyoides, which is the green grouper. Um, both are pretty high value species here in the Philippines, and that's why we're interested in culturing them and expanding the culture of those things. Well, I, I came to the Philippines first in October of 2007. Oh. I really enjoyed being here. I enjoyed the, the, the ocean. I enjoyed being on the beaches and all of that. Um, but when I really considered when when I was wanting to stay here and live here, uh, I needed to figure out what it is that I could do to earn a living here. Um, I traveled in, in, in and around the country and in the big cities, but what, what really got my attention was when I, uh, when I was with, with uh, a friend of mine vacationing in Camigan Island, and we ran across a BFAR station there, and the people were so warm and, and friendly that you know they invited me to, to observe what they were doing there. So really, I I noticed that all the capital implements for producing fish were really of low cost. So you know, I started to consider uh, my own future in, in the fishing industry. Um, I really have have to thank the BFAR for that, uh, especially Mr. Bujos in, in, in Region 7. Um, he's, he's been really uh, patient with us and he's, he's really helped us uh, everywhere along the way. And um, I have lots to thank for, from the BFAR for this, uh, you know, this, this project here, this Mariculture Park um, is well suited for, for foreign investors. Um, it's really uh, the, the, the few places within the Philippines that a foreigner can, can own fully his business without a, a, a partnership with a, with, a, with a national. So the, the, the BFAR has laid out throughout the country uh, these mariculture parks. Um, the one that, that we're in now is in Kandihai. Um, the sites conveniently for the investors have been already surveyed for the, the quality of the water. Um, this one in particular, it, it sits in a, in a bay, so we're protected um, from big waves and big water, all the, 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 the detrimental weather. Um, we're not 100% protected from it, but uh, we do have some protection here, which is more than some other places uh, that they're culturing uh, fish. Uh, we've, we've actually had two, two typhoons that uh, we recently encountered here. And you know, if, if you can see the cage is still standing, there's, there was no real damage. Uh, we experienced some loss with our stock, but you know, that's, that's to be expected with, with the extreme weather. Um, what you're looking for in a site, uh, especially when you're, when you're going to culture grouper, um, the depth of the water is, is, is really uh, is keen. Um, you can culture other species in shallower water. Uh, the grouper tend to settle on the very bottom, so you know somewhere about five meters is probably ideal, five or six meters. Uh, that gives you enough vertical space so that you can stock pretty densely uh, your grouper in your cage. Um, the cage that I have is a little bit different. Uh, it's, it's, it's specifically designed for, for grouper. Um, some fish you can grow in, in, in a single enclosure. Uh, with the grouper you need to actually be able to, to separate them by sizing and grading them and we do that once a week uh, just to ensure that there's uh, no cannibalism or the cannibalism is controlled. Um, if you can I guess notice behind me there's, there's small uh, three by three, my, my, mine are three meters by three meters per enclosure and uh, the reason that's important is that the, the, the actual stock is going to grow at a different rate. Uh, that way there's enough room within the, the cage itself uh, to separate the size of stock into wherever, wherever they fit. Um, I'm going to have to say, you know, if you're able to put in the time and, and, and do your due diligence with, with this grouper, you, you can be successful with it. Um, I think where a lot of people come into difficulties is that um, they really haven't been trained uh, to, to, to culture grouper. Uh, they try to use the traditional methods for bangus or, uh, or pompano or other species that are, that are being cultured, but uh, our animal uh, is, it just behaves a little bit differently. Um, I received my training at the Seafdick uh, in the finfish hatchery, 
and you know we certainly are, are happy to be involved with them and they, they from time to time give us technical advice and they're there to help us whenever we need it um, but uh, the, the biggest thing is that you, you must take you must be patient with with the with the stock um, you know it's, it's something that you have to give your love to it's something that you have to give your attention to fully um, but if you're if you're patient, you know the the, the, the fish will respond to, to your patience and your love. They grow well in this environment. So, you know this is their natural habitat. So it's not like we're taking a foreign species and try to make them grow here. They they, they naturally occur. You can you know pick them out of the ocean wherever wherever you are here, especially here here in Kandihai. We have green grouper and tiger grouper, and they actually have a, a, the dusky tail grouper. I've seen I've seen all three of those species here. So, you know, our, our fish love, love this environment. Um, we're not having any problems with, uh, with temperature or salinity here. You know, they're, they're well adapted to this environment. They're suited for this environment. Well, the, the, one of the biggest problems or the hurdles that we had to overcome um, when I was first beginning was, was to be able to get hatchery bred stock. Um, Thankfully, you know, uh, I encountered or, or met along my way Jojo Sapalo. He's, uh, he's the owner of uh, Kingdom Prize Seafood. He supplies all of our fingerlings now, which, you know, before it was, it was a problem where one month I, I would find that the supplier had, had stock and then two or three months would go by and there'd be no stock. So, you know, once we, once we met uh, Mr. Jojo at Kingdom Prize, we no longer have that problem. Um, well, w when you get them from the hatchery, um, they should they should be tested for VNN, which is a viral neural necrosis. Um, they should have, you know, w when, whenever you receive any stock, um, you should look that they're schooling well, that they swim together well, that they're not floating upside down. Um, their swim bladders sometimes get damaged in the transport. There's heat stress. There's lots of things that, that can ha happen in transport. Um, the hatchery, you know, all of our species that we're culturing, we, we, we need to have hatchery support so that we can have a consistent production, uh, either monthly or yearly or whatever your cycle is going to be. Um, the, the, the ones that come from the hatchery usually are, um, you know, you can buy one inch or two inch and th those are big enough to go right into the ocean. Uh, at, at two inches, they're strong enough, even though some people don't like to take grouper that small. Um, it does take a little bit more care to get them to be uh, 150 grams. Um, when, we, when we get ours from the hatchery, what we have to do is we, we uh, get them acclimated to the, to the water temperature, we get them acclimated to the salinity specific to our site. Uh, you know, when, when you receive the stock in your bags, um, really the first thing you should do is get them directly into the water with the bag sealed so that the temperature of the ocean matches the temperature inside the bag. That's going to eliminate some of the some of the shock that they're going to be experiencing. And then slowly, slowly, slowly you have to integrate the ocean water with what, what the, the water is inside the bag so that the salinity becomes even and then they're not stressed with that as well. Um, once we, once we, you know, once you have a, a good hatchery supplier you should be able to, to supply your cages or your one cage, whatever it is, on a regular basis. That way you can predict your cycle. Um, for me, that's, that's really important to know how much I'm going to be harvesting, so that way I can target my customer by volume. Um, if you were lucky and had a very large production, you know, you, you definitely need hatchery support. Um, uh, it depends on the size. Uh, the smaller the size of the fish, the more you can put per bag. But generally, uh, with about a one inch fingerling, you're probably looking at about uh, 150 pieces inside of a cellophane bag. Uh, the transport time usually is, I don't know, it's under 12 hours for sure. Uh, we like to keep it under five or six hours total transport between when they collect them from the hatchery to when we actually put them in the water. That way, you know, we're not experiencing uh, undue mortality for the, the lack of dissolved oxygen. So what, what, what the BFAR recommends for the standard stocking density is 20 pieces per cubic meter. Um, we like that stocking density. That density is gonna ensure that there's enough dissolved oxygen in our, in our cage. That way that some, some of our stock is not gonna grow at a different rate for lack of oxygen. Uh, you will get that if you try to stock them 
uh, beyond the, the recommended density. There's, there's lots of parasites that can occur, lots of bacteria that can occur with the, uh, you know, when you try to push the stocking density beyond the, the limit of your animal. So, you know, we, we, we definitely stick to the recommendations from the BFAR and the CFDIC because it maintains the quality of our fish, it maintains the health of our fish, and it, it ensures our production.